that's the big crossroads for you, isn't it? Isn't that where you step into Oz, that's, you know, exactly. in, the, in our story here? <laughs> exactly. You know, really, you know, that's it. That's the big moment, getting a contract like it's, that. What year was that? That was 2012. And that, that was a big deal. You yeah. know, it was because I came here and I said, I give myself one year to get a recording contract. And I had one in 11 months. So wow. that tells you that, okay, I, 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 I've, I've made it happen. And I made it happen within that timeline. And uh, I didn't waste any time in that sense. It, it was just... It was about making it happen, and if it wasn't going to happen, I was going to go home. That's why I had applied for for the university thing, you know, I, I, because I wasn't gonna, I wasn't gonna be the guy you find on Skid Row with a with a guitar and amp or something, <laughs> you know. You know, playing for 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 nobody, which which was actually another one of my my first gigs here was actually pl I played on Skid Row with Mike Panera and. Uh, and some other people, we were just playing actually for the homeless. Uh, that's which, a great uh, gig. I mean, that's a, you know, to, to, to diversify your, your performing. Was, uh, and they're very appreciative. They, they loved it because they don't get, you know, they don't get a lot of concerts there. So they were very appreciative. Yeah. And, 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 you know, we made some friends. It's very cool. You know, they, they loved it. Yeah, I've been down there quite a bit. They're, 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 it's just unfortunate, but it's a great bunch. And uh, around the L.A. Mission area, yeah. Skid Row. Yeah, that, that's, that's kind of... That's, yeah. I have to check where it exactly was, but it was around that area. Um, yeah. So, so you, you, you get signed 2012 and do you start, you create, when did you create your first album? So we kind of went through a little bit of, uh, uh, we were calling it artist development, uh, for a little bit because, mm -hmm. uh, I was, uh, as a songwriter, I was, I was very confident and I was, I had kind of figured out what I wanted in terms of what I wanted to sound like and what I wanted to play. But I, there, there's still things that when you're, when you're young, you haven't figured out everything. And one of the things I really needed to develop was my voice. And because uh, I, I hadn't really taken any vocal lessons, I didn't know anything. So to me, sometimes singing was, was, was essentially uh, almost like, like uh, destroying my own voice because I didn't know what I was doing. So we wanted to go through this process before we went in the studio, make sure that I had everything figured out before we record. Otherwise, you end up in a situation where you lose your voice halfway through the tour, and then, then what do you do? Because that's the worst. That's the worst thing. Is like if you're, if you get to that point where you're actually successful enough to tour, and then you say, guys, guys, I, I can't do this. But, ah, my voice, you know, it's gone. You know, you can't do oh, that. So, uh, it was, it was, uh, and this was really the label that said, you know, we want to, we want to prepare you. It's kind of like uh, joining the army. Like we want to prepare you for the war before you enter the war. You know what I mean? Like you, you gotta know how to shoot that gun before you go out in, in the field. And, uh, right. and that's what we did. We went through that. And the other, there were a lot of things we had to do. I didn't have a band and, uh, that, that took a while because, uh, my music is, is not something that you can just pick up and, and play necessarily. There's a lot of time signatures and, uh, you know, there's, there's tempo changes and things like that. You know, you gotta, you gotta be, be awake. You know, you can't just play that stuff in your sleep. The label must have really liked you in order to sign you without a band. Cause usually you have to have a band. Right. You have to have inertia behind you. Yeah. Everything's going, they must've saw, what did they see in you that, 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 cause that's, that's not, you know, like <clears throat> it's not, you're not a celebrity at this point. Right. You know, how, how did, what did they see it? What did they, how has that done? Yes. How'd you do that for people listening? There's a young Rocky out there that's at 13 years old. And he's like, how do you do that? Right. Um, I would say that, uh, it probably, it's a situation that probably wouldn't happen to most people. And it is kind of, uh, there's a little bit of l element of luck there and, a little, and a, an element of n knowing the people that can make it happen. And that's really because Mike Pinero introduced me to Kim Richards, and Kim Richards is the CEO of Allied Artist, he basically, even though he's not the, he's not in charge of the music label, or, or the record label, he's uh, he's the guy above that, right? So, he's he's pitching me to the president of the music group, who unfortunately passed away. His name was Stefan Bauer. He, he he, his past, you know, like he he used to work for Warner Brothers. He was he worked you know he worked with the Rolling Stones and Jeff Beck and you know all these big bands, right? And uh, uh, he's basically so Kim's playing the music to Stefan and and he, he's hearing the potential, but of course this we're talking demos, we're talking things that I made 
on my own playing all the instruments at home in Norway, mm. you know, just <sighs> kind of making things happen. And I'm, you know, at the time, my, uh, and I'm saying this because I've worked a lot on this since then, my engineering skills were not very good. My recording <laughs> skills weren't very good. And uh, I just right. made these demos that to me were really great at the time because they were just like, this is what I'm hearing in my head. And then, uh, you know, for everyone else, it would probably sound kind of, you know, kind of, kind of silly. Uh, it wouldn't, it, it probably didn't have the same effect on other people. But the nice thing was that the label actually did hear that. They were hearing the potential. They were hearing that, uh, that influence that I had uh, of, of like bands like Pink Floyd and Queen and uh, Yngwie Malmsteen and so on. So they were kind of, they were intrigued by that because there aren't that many artists like that. And we figured that, or they figured that uh, having someone that is doing something that is essentially a concept album uh, can can uh, uh, make some noise because it's it's not something that everyone's doing. Mm -hmm. 